Hello, I'm Wendy. I'm working in watercolour today and I'm working from a photograph. It's a loose snow scene and a narrated demonstration. This is the photograph that I'm using, um, but I'm not going to paint everything that you can see in there. Quite often when I'm out um, and I see a scene that I like or things in the scene that I like, I take a wide angle photograph and rather than zooming in on any particular point, I just take the wide ang angled photograph and then when I get home, I enjoy looking back on them and I like to look to see if there are any little bits in it that I might be able to use as a painting. There's lots of things in this photograph now looking at it that I really like and things that can be used as reference material for future paintings. You've got the um, logs there and the branches with the snow on them, uh, which, you know, would make a nice little study and give you the reference there if you wanted to put those things into your future paintings. I particularly like the colour of the autumn leaves that were remaining on the ground and on the low branches as well. And in actual fact, I've used those in a painting that I might be putting up on YouTube um, just a little bit later. So looking at this photograph then, you'll see the area that um, I'm zooming in on. And I just loved the uh, the little tree in the far distance there with the little fence and the blue shadows behind. And I do like painting greenery and um, I love the evergreen brambles with the snow on them. If you like my work and um, subscribe to my channel, possibly, then I think you'll find this video interesting because um, I'm basically trying to describe my working process and how I build up a picture. Um, it's not easy and um, some things go right, some things go wrong and I'm trying to sort of get that across to you. That um, So I hope that you do find some of the things that I'm talking about and the way that I'm working of interest and have helped you in your own pictures. This was the sketch that I made and um, I did use a little bit of masking fluid. I know some people don't like to use it but um, I think it's invaluable for doing sort of little areas of snow. Mainly snow I think is better left as the white of watercolour paper and I do do that. But sometimes you've got these, as you can see, these little bits of snow that are on the leaves. And it's difficult to leave those when you want to work a, a wash quite freely. So I do like to put a little bit of masking fluid on the leaves and, and along the branches as well, where the snow's sort of fallen on those. There's such a minimal use of masking fluid here. You could easily get away with not using it and use um, some white gouache towards the end of the painting in place of the masking. I did use an old rigger brush to put some, some of the grasses in the foreground as well with the masking fluid. I really love this little scene and I wasn't going to make many changes to it. I was basically going to paint it as I saw it in a loose way in watercolour. I'm starting at the back. Um, I saw quite some quite warm colours um, behind the gate there. And I put those on and then there was these um, lovely blue shadows. Um, you might notice I wet the paper first, not completely, but just in places, just to get a very loose suggestion of the shadows with some soft edges and some a bit harder. And with the same colour, with maybe a little touch of red in it, this is um, ultramarine with a touch of light red. I put the foreground shadows in. I like to work lightly to start with and I like to put all the shadow areas in first, particularly in a snow scene. I find if you start putting the shadows on afterwards, um, it can pull up the colour of the like the brambles and the tree trunks and things. You can pull out those brown colours and you can you can get quite muddy. So on the first initial stages of the painting, I like to um, just have a look around and pick out the 
colours on the photograph that I like and that are apparent and um, there was quite a bit of warmth in there so I was just putting some burnt sienna and some raw sienna in places nothing too exact and you can add a little bit more a little bit less I started off then by um, doing some work on the tree and again I'm looking at the tree and I'm not initially putting down all the dark colours I'm going to work it up in a few stages. I do tend to be a bit heavy handed with darks and I did do a painting of this scene, slightly different composition before this one and I wasn't happy with it. It was all a little bit too dark, I got the greens too dark, I got the tree a bit too dark and so I'm making a determined effort on this painting not to go much darker than a sort of um, mid-tone anywhere <laughs> until about three quarters of the way through so that um, I don't fall into that same trap again and so you'll see here they're all kept light and mid-tone the first um, tones on the tree and the first tones on the little fence there similarly I'm approaching the foliage in, in stages as well starting very light I would normally work like this and the greens that I'm using, I'm using um, this time I'm using a cobalt blue with um, raw sienna mainly and I've got some burnt sienna in there to darken it in places. I always work the foliage very loosely and I do it in stages and I work wet into wet as you can see here. I have speeded this up um, because um, these strokes do get quite repetitive and um, I did work for me fairly slowly on this I was being quite considered on where I was putting the greens I didn't want to cover up too much of the snow so you can see I'm just dotting around a bit changing the colors changing the tones this is how I like to work I like to sort of put all these things down and then tidy up and tighten up the uh, the image a little bit later on in the painting And again I'm putting on the first stages of what's left of the leaves and ivy and um, twigs on the tree. I find building it up this way in stages, working from light and then gradually getting into dark, I can judge things and, and I can work around the picture. I, I couldn't sort of work in an area and leave a lot of white around it because I couldn't judge the picture at all I couldn't judge the colours and the tones so this is the way I, I like to work working like this I have to be in a way quite disciplined because it reaches stages when it really doesn't look very good and you're not finishing things off so you don't all, you don't know really know how it's going to turn out so you've got to have some confidence in yourself um, as you as you're painting and um, I've learned that over the years that um, I've given up too often at a sort of a halfway stage working like this I've got yeah I've got to a sort of a halfway stage and thought oh this isn't going to work this is horrible but uh, from my experience of painting a long time um, I would say to you that uh, don't feel like that just keep working and um, continue and it's not going to hurt if it doesn't work out in the end that's all right you can do another one but you probably find that um, you at least get some of the picture working and probably all of it if you persevere and don't give up with watercolour and don't expect um, to have it looking perfect and finished and really really good as you're working just hope that it all comes together in the end and have confidence in yourself you can see here I'm going with um, some of some of the darker mid-tones here but not too dark and um, I'm putting on some of these um, twigs and branches that are sort of threading through the foliage and uh, I'll be using my usual palette which will, will be um, ultramarine with burnt sienna or a bit of burnt umber on there but again stressing not to do this um, really dark at this stage on the painting and not to finish it either we'll move around the picture
So again, I, I've speeded this up because it is very repetitive, this, um, this way of working. And um, I'm going a little bit darker here on the tree, but it, it's not going to be my final darks. My painting style is quite loose. Um, if you're tackling a subject such as this, you may want to um, be a little bit more considered on your brush strokes. It's uh, entirely down to personal preference and style. I tend to work, um, well, not really as loose as I would like to, to be honest. The uh, the more I paint, the, the looser I do seem to paint. And um, I do like to make more random marks and try and get more energetic marks into my painting. So we're all working and uh, learning as we go along. For me, it was important to keep some warmth in this picture. I think snow scenes can get very cold and um, there is a lot of warmth and there's a lot of warmth in this photograph there. So I'm popping in some of the burnt sienna, burnt sienna in places. Now at this stage in painting the brambles, I have mixed up um, well, um, almost my final dark here. I do add a little bit more, but this green will be mixed up now. I'll be putting in some Prussian blue with the burnt sienna rather than cobalt. Um, I find the Prussian with the burnt sienna, um, any of your yellows and raw sienna, will give you a nice um, dark green that you can put in in one go without building up layers. And as you can see, I'm, I'm dotting around here with my uh, with my brush. I am all the time keeping an eye on the photograph because it was the photograph and that scene that I really liked. So I keep an eye on the photograph, your reference all the time, rather than just being carried away with the painting. I, I did want to sort of reproduce that scene um, because I did like it so much. And again, you can see here, I'm uh, just putting some of those darker bits and bobs and leaves and things that were underneath the fence. And moving into the foreground area, I didn't want it to become too fussy. I really wanted to keep the focus in the middle of the picture. And so I didn't want to go overboard on putting too much grass and foliage and things in the foreground. But you can see here now, by putting that shadow on when you first start, you can then build up on top of that shadow without worrying about um, paint smudging. And I think that's, uh, that's the way to go. I put in a few little twigs and um, marks that stand for twigs there um, in the foreground because they were there. But I didn't, again, I didn't want to overdo it, so they were just suggested. Now, the next stage took quite a long time. Um, I was um, looking at the photograph, trying to keep the tones in the right place, trying to get the darks without going overboard on them. And this is actually four times speed. So it did take, for me, it did take quite a while to, to do this little bit of the painting. There was twigs and a few leaves on the top of the tree. Clearly it was winter, so there wouldn't have been a lot of green leaves on there. I think that the it was all the twigs together and a little bit of ivy that was giving this feeling of a bit of a mass of um, leaves and a bit of foliage up there. So the next stage in working around the picture was doing just a few extra darks on the fence. I didn't want to overdo it. Um, but there was some shadow on there and it I felt it sort of balanced the, the picture having the darks there. And then you'll see I moved on to the tree trunk for the final darks on that.
Again, this bit um, was rather repetitive and went on for a while. I have shown you um, this in real time, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, stop and start again at a different place. And you'll see I've got this little turn the page, which I think is quite clever. Um, it's just showing you it in real time, but cutting down the length of time on the video because it would get really, really monotonous seeing me do this for five or ten minutes at a time. It did take quite a while, but it was quite enjoyable and um, I love doing these um, these branches. So at this stage I'm um, sort of nearing the end of the of the foliage. I was quite happy with um, with what I was doing. I was quite enjoying painting like this, and I felt that um, I'd got the the tones about right. A little bit of um, work on the gate. And then it was the question of um, taking off the the masking fluid and seeing what we were left with and what we had to do. They always look very stark, don't they, these areas when you take the masking fluid off. What I did here was just um, with a very sort of a mid-tone brown, I suggested the twigs or the, the branches that were there. Uh, on my first painting that um, I did that I didn't turn out that good, I uh, made those far too dark, those, uh, the, the branches, and uh, it really didn't work. So again, I'm stressing, and from what I've learnt, don't go in too dark straight away with anything, and certainly don't mix up things like burnt sienna and ultramarine really dark to work with, because it gives you a black, and it just doesn't work very well in watercolour. And then just continuing very briefly to tidy up one or two areas. Yeah, that big lump of snow was bothering me, so I, I broke it up into uh, a few more random shapes. The next stage was putting some shadows on the areas that I'd left for snow. And I think this makes a big difference. You've got those stark white areas that I left with the masking fluid. You could knock them back with the shadow colour so that they're sitting rather than standing out from the background. And if you don't like them, if you've got some really awful shapes there, you can put some green on them. It's very versatile as using masking fluid. I don't think it's something you should be afraid of. I quite like the random sort of effects of the grasses that were left from the masking fluid. And I thought, um, well, they were actually quite sort of um, raw sienna-ish sort of colour. So I put some raw sienna and a bit of, um, bit of brown to accentuate them there. And I put some of them going higher up into the background deliberately to, again, link the foreground with that right-hand side of the, uh, of the distance there. Looking at the photograph, I could see that there were some additional little um, bits of snow in certain areas of the picture, and I thought... Um, Judging it and looking at it, I thought they did need a little bit more. And so I popped those on with some white gouache or some white ink. And I put um, a few of my final greens in places as well. So this was the final painting. Um, I'm sure you've gathered that I quite enjoyed painting this. Um, do subscribe to my channel if you don't want to miss future content. Probably another snow scene that I'm working on and some snowdrops.
and then we're going to look forward to spring paintings. Bye for now and happy painting.